Welcome into AZ Audibles alongside Eric Sorensen and Devin Henry. I'm Jordan Hamm. And with the news that Sean Aguano has moved on from Chandler to Arizona State, we want to talk about some of the best coaches in the state that make an impact not only on the field but off the field with their players. Devin, let's start with you. Well, coaches typically get their jobs or lose their jobs due to the record on the scoreboard. How many wins, how many losses you have. But I think that the toughest job a coach has isn't even on the field. It's molding young men into great men of society. I think that's harder than going out and winning a state championship when you bring in 60, 70 kids into your weight room. And when you look across the state, someone that I was impressed in in a first year head coach here in Arizona was John Kitna over at Brophy Prep. Haley Stasiak went out, did a story on them, and at the end of the game realized that they had this post-game ritual where the athletes would raise their hand and shout out something good about one of their teammates in front of the entire huddle, yeah, really giving cool out some concept. love. It, it's awesome. I think that something like that needs to be the atmosphere of every single football team, not just in high school, but college, pros, being able to share some love, community, friendship. So I think that that was so interesting. I absolutely love that idea. And then someone who's been established here in Arizona for a long time, Will Babb over at Peoria, mm -hmm. won back-to-back -back state championships under another big-time head coach in Arizona, Doug Clapp. Yep. Now he's in that same position where uh, I was able to talk to a few of their young men at Peoria, and they're all so well-grounded. Something grounded kind of like that is something that I really enjoy seeing in some of these coaches and some of these programs as well. For my coach, uh, it's, it might be one of the first ones you think of, Jason Mons over at Saguaro. And the, the reasons may not be the rings, the wins, obviously, that success is huge for the program and for that community. But when you look at the assistant coaches that he has had for so long, and that just means that they can stand the guy and that he treats them well. And then you also look at, um, you know, the, the great coaching staff and, and what they've been able to build together, but also the guys that consistently come back once they've moved on. It seems like every Thanksgiving they have a ton of players coming back to talk to the current players, just hang out and continue to build that community. I think that speaks volumes for what that Saguaro program's all about. And Eric, I know when you were out there in their training camp, the one thing you noticed was it was no ego. It was they they were the big guys on the block. They had all the state championships, but there was minimal ego between that team. And I think that starts up top with Jason Mons. The coaching staff genuinely likes one another. They're, like you said, no animosity. And the crazy thing, guys, is that a handful of those assistant coaches under Mons don't live anywhere near Saguaro High School, and they make the trek from the West Valley. Some live down in Ahwatukee. They come all the way up to Scottsdale just to be a part of the success. And it is definitely, we talk about family, and I know that can be sort of an overused phrase in high school football, but at Saguaro, there's, there's, there isn't any more truth to that than, than at SAGU. Eric, we'll wrap things up with you. David Ennis, Northwest Christian, been in the school since 2010, has won three state championships. Guys, he is 99 and 19 as the head coach of the Crusaders. <laughs> he has never won less than eight games in a single season. Off the field, though, even more impressive because he is a man of faith, he is a man of character. And the interesting balance that he deals with is most times around Thanksgiving, he's preparing for a state championship game but he never loses focus of his family. And I talked to him in November, and he just said that it's an interesting balance that he has to deal with, but one that he always makes a priority, putting football aside during that difficult time when you're preparing for you know, teams like Yuma Catholic and other really strong 3A teams. And that's one of the things I really, really appreciate about him. A lot of really good coaches we were able to highlight. I feel like this could be a repeat topic for quite a few weeks because we are not short on great coaches here in the state. Uh, so this is definitely one I think we're going to revisit here in this offseason. Uh, if it's anything high school football, make sure to keep it to AZ Audibles and Sports 360 AZ.